Hello everybody and welcome to our channel Vocabulary TV. The lesson you are going to watch today is a very useful resource for learning common idioms and phrases in English language. In this lesson, we have explained each idiom through interesting pictorials, meanings and example sentences and for some of these, we have also made an attempt to cover the stories or contexts in which they first originated. This will help you learn them effectively and for life. Besides, the idioms that are covered in this lesson are the most popular or the most frequent ones. So rest assured, they will be of immense help in the questions on this area. In various competitive exams such as SSC, Bank PO, MBA entrances to mention a few. First, let's discuss what the term idiom means. An idiom is nothing but a phrase or a group of words which is used as a saying in spoken and written English. It conveys some meaning to the listener or the reader. Let's take for example the phrase, it's raining cats and dogs. There could be two types of meanings for such a phrase. The first is the literal meaning, which is the meaning when we consider the meanings of original words exactly and closely. Literally, our example phrase would mean that dogs and cats are falling down from the sky, which we know is not possible. So phrases are not always meant to be taken literally. Sometimes the speaker or reader intends to create a special effect by using the more imaginative meaning associated with that phrase, which is known as the figurative meaning. The phrase, it's raining cats and dogs, equates the size and volume of raindrops to cats and dogs. So the figurative meaning associated with the phrase is simply, it's raining heavily. For idioms, it is the figurative meaning that is more important and more tricky to grasp. Sometimes the use of an idiom might leave the reader or listener totally confused. In written and spoken conversations, if he or she has not seen or heard the idiom earlier. So that you may bookmark and cover the idioms at your own pace, we have divided the entire content of 200 idioms into small sections covering 10 idioms each. We start with section 1 in which we shall cover the following 10 idioms as you can observe on your screen. Our first idiom is Achilles heel. Sometimes for learning an idiom, knowing the original context or the story behind the idiom helps. Like in this case, Achilles was a famous warrior in Greek mythology whose mother had tried to make him invulnerable by dipping him in the river Styx. But the heel with which she held him was not immersed, making it his vulnerable spot. And while Achilles remained an undefeated warrior, he ultimately died because of an arrow that pierced his heel. So that is what Achilles heel means. It means a weak or vulnerable spot of someone. A fatal flaw in someone which can even bring about his or her downfall. An example sentence for the idiom is Mr. Dundon was a very shrewd businessman but his Achilles heel was gambling because of which he went bankrupt. Idiom number two is Barking up the wrong tree. It's a century old idiom that seems to come from the practice of hunting raccoons. The raccoons used to climb up a tree when they were being chased by dogs. Waiting for their huntsmen to arrive, the dogs barked up the tree where they thought a raccoon was hiding. Sometimes the raccoon escaped to adjacent trees. Thus the dog ended up barking up an empty tree where they mistakenly thought the raccoon was hiding. 
So barking up the wrong tree means to follow a false trail or to pursue the wrong line of inquiry. For example, by accusing Mr. Raj of embezzling company's funds, I think you are barking up the wrong tree as he has been our trusted aide since the past 25 years. Idiom number three is to hit the nail on the head. Well, hitting the nail precisely on the head is indeed a tough task. And being exact on this job is very important because that only will drive the nail through and prevent your fingers from getting hurt. So the figurative meaning associated with this phrase is to do exactly the right thing or to be right about something. An example sentence that illustrates this meaning is Rajiv hit the nail on the head when I asked him to estimate the number of toffees in the jar and he said 105 without even counting. Now Rajiv here did not really try to drive a nail through. Instead, the sentence means that Rajiv estimated the number of toffees in the jar and he was exact or correct about that number. Next, we have the phrase, go break a leg. A non-native English speaker might be totally puzzled as to why someone would want such bad luck to come to him, as suggested by the literal meaning of break a leg. But going beyond the literal meaning and trying to understand the true intentions of the speaker, the listener should be aware that the phrase break a leg is a way to wish someone good luck by uttering just the opposite. It is used to wish a person who is about to embark on some important task, especially to an actor or a musician before he or she goes on stage to perform. The expression reflects a theatrical superstition in which wishing a person good luck is considered bad luck. Our fifth idiom is on tenter hooks. This phrase derives from the idea of cloth being suspended on a tenter. Now, a tenter means a frame for stretching cloth while it is drying. This device was used in earlier ages. Since the cloth was totally stretched out on the tenter, the idiom on tenter hooks means in a state of suspense or anxiety about something. For example, Ram has given an interview to a reputed MNC and is on tenter hooks about its expected result. Idiom number six is red herring. The phrase is used to refer to something that misleads or distracts from the relevant or important issue. The idiom derives from the fact that a red herring is a type of strong smelling smoked fish that was once drawn across the trail of a scent to mislead hunting dogs and put them off the scent. An example sentence would be, the detectives in the novel follow a red herring for some time but later on come back to the right track. Idiom number seven is, dog in the manger. The phrase comes from one of Aesop's fables about a dog lying in a manger full of hay. When an ox tries to eat some hay, the dog bites him despite the fact that the hay is of no use to the dog. The phrase is used for someone who prevents others from enjoying what one has no use for oneself. An example would be, stop being such a dog in the manger and let your sister play with your mobile if you are not using it. Idiom number 8 is to break the ice. Now, as shown in the picture, breaking the ice paves the way forward. So the idiom means to initiate social interactions and attempt to become friends with someone. When Raj met her for the first time, he tried to break the ice but she was a little cold. Our ninth idiom is a man of straw. This phrase alludes to a man made of straw, like perhaps a scarecrow, which in essence has no substance and is easy to defeat. 
So the phrase a man of straw means a man of no substance or a person who has a weak character. An example sentence would be they call her husband a man of straw because when she was pregnant and needed his support the most, he deserted her and ran away. And our tenth idiom is a skeleton in the closet. This metaphoric term alludes to a murder victim which is long concealed in a closet and could possibly be based on some true incident that is now forgotten. So a skeleton in a closet refers to a shameful or embarrassing secret that one wants to hide at all costs. For instance, their elder son is a drug addict who is currently in a rehab center. No wonder the family keeps it a hush affair as they perhaps consider it to be a skeleton in their closet. Let's move on to section 2. The 10 idioms that we are going to cover in this section of our lesson are there on your screen. Our 11th idiom is to smell a rat. For centuries, the word smell has been used in a figurative sense to describe someone who, because of their intuition, perceives something to be off. Very much like a cat who might be able to smell a rat nearby despite not having sight of it. So to smell a rat means to be suspicious. The key to understanding this phrase is the word suspicious. When you suspect that something is wrong or sense that someone has caused something wrong, you smell a rat. An example of usage would be, the police smelled a rat at the crime scene where a girl was seen hanging from the ceiling fan. It could have been a murder made to look like a suicide. Next, we have the idiom, as good as one's word. Now, word here refers to what one speaks. If someone keeps his or her word, which is the same as saying that one is as good as one's word, it means one is faithful to one's promise. So, if you are as good as your word, you will do what you have promised to do. An example sentence would be, Rajiv said that he would repay my loan this week and he was as good as his word. Next is baker's dozen. Dozen as we know means 12. The idiom baker's dozen is an exception however. It is widely believed that this phrase originated from the practice of medieval English bakers giving an extra loaf when selling a dozen in order to avoid being penalized for selling short weight. So 12 plus an extra one makes 13 and baker's dozen means 13. Our 14th idiom is to eat humble pie. This idiom has a very interesting origin. This word humble here was once humble. Now umbles were the intestines or less appetizing parts of an animal such as a deer or a hog which were left by the rich for their servants and other lower class people to eat while they themselves ate the better parts of the meat. In time it became corrupted to eat humble pie and came to mean to debase yourself or to act with humility. So to eat humble pie means to be forced to admit that you are wrong and to say you are sorry. For example, the producers of the commercial had to eat humble pie and apologize for misrepresenting the facts. Idiom number 15 is lily livered. People once believed that your passions came from your liver. If you were lily livered, your liver was white like the flower because it did not contain any blood. A lily livered person is one who lacks in courage or is cowardly. For instance, we can say that horror movies like The Ring or Gothica are not for the lily livered. Idiom number 16 is Hobson's Choice. The phrase is said to originate with Thomas Hobson 
a livery stable owner in England. To rotate the use of his horses, he offered customers the choice of either taking the horse in the stall nearest the door or taking none at all. An example of the idiom Hobson's choice would be Henry Ford telling his customers, you can buy any color as long as it's black. So the idiom means no real choice at all. Take it or leave it. Next, we have a very interesting idiom to draw a long bow. Now everyone knows the fact that bow and arrows were used as weapons in earlier ages. A long bow, however, was a large bow drawn by hand, almost of the size of a man, and was used by English archers from the 12th to the 16th centuries. As expected, using this weapon required extraordinary training and great force to draw the bowstring and was no mean feat. In trained hands, the longbow was capable of punching an arrow through medieval metal armor at great distances. So to draw the longbow means to exaggerate in telling stories or to overstate something. An example sentence would be, I am sure he was drawing a longbow when he said that he once fell from the roof of a 20-storied building but survived unscathed. Our 18th idiom is mad as a hatter. The phrase comes from the fact that in the 18th or 19th centuries, hat makers used mercury in processing furs or hides to make hats. Hatters absorbed large amounts of this over the years, which gradually poisoned them, often leading to mental disturbance. So the idiom as mad as a hatter means completely insane. For example, don't pay attention to what he says. He is as mad as a hatter. Idiom number 19 is loose cannon. Loose cannon is a metaphoric expression that alludes to cannon mounted on the deck of a sailing ship, which, if dislodged during combat or a storm, could cause serious damage to both vessel and crew by sliding about uncontrollably. This idiom started getting used figuratively in the last century. The phrase loose cannon refers to a person whose actions are unpredictable and uncontrollable. Like we can say that she can't be trusted to talk to the press. She is a loose cannon. Our 20th idiom is gift of the gap. Though the present day meaning of the word gab is to talk idly or incessantly as about trivial matters, gab was also the primitive Celtic word for mouth. So someone who uses his or her mouth efficiently for speaking possesses this gift. One who has the gift of the gab has the ability to speak effortlessly, glibly or persuasively. For example, she is a naturally good salesperson with the gift of the gap. Moving on to section 3, on your screen are the 10 idioms that we are going to cover in this section of our lesson. Our 21st idiom is to catch a tartar. Well, among other meanings, the word tartar originally referred to a member of any of the various tribes chiefly Mongolian and Turkish, who, under the leadership of their much-feared leader, Genghis Khan, over in Asia and much of Eastern Europe in the Middle Ages. So, to catch a Tatar means to deal with someone or something that proves unexpectedly troublesome or powerful. An example would be, they probably thought that he would back out if he is dragged into a court case but they will soon realize that they have caught a tartar. Our next expression is peeping tom. This phrase has a very interesting origin. According to a legend, a man named Leofric taxed the people of Coventry heavily. His wife, Lady Godiva, 
had a soft corner for her people and begged him not to. Leofric once jokingly said that he would end the tax if she rode through the streets of Coventry naked. So she decided to do exactly that. While this happened, everybody in Coventry was supposed to stay indoors with his or her shutters closed. However, a tailor named Tom had a sneaky look at Godiva as she rode by and he was struck blind for this sin. The phrase Peeping Tom thus refers to a person who secretly watches others, especially for sexual gratification, another word for which is a voyeur. For example, the police caught a peeping Tom right outside their house. 23rd idiom is Big Big. Well, in the 17th and 18th centuries, wearing wigs was a fashion in Europe. Kings in France and England wore these and they were even compulsory for all European nobility and persons of quality. The more important the person, the bigger the wig. Wigs were expensive to purchase and to keep in condition and were the preserve of the powerful and wealthy. So a big wig is a person who has an important or powerful position. For instance, everyone aspires to be a big, big one day. 24th idiom is a storm in a teacup. This is the British version. The American version of the same idiom is tempest in a teapot, which means the same. This idiom is of an unknown origin, but you can yourself imagine how big can a storm originating out of a small teacup or a teapot really become? So storm in a teacup or tempest in a teapot refers to a situation where people get very angry or worried about something that is not important at all. An example sentence would be, So what if father called you a buffoon? Any attempts to fight or argue with him would be like raising a storm in a teacup. 25th idiom is to get off one's high horse. This idiom originates from England in the old days when a person's rank was determined by the size of the horse he rode. If you were a noble or a person of some importance, you invariably rode a high horse, which were usually much taller than the horses ridden by the common man. Riding such high horses began to be equated with superiority. So if you are riding your high horse, you are acting superior to others. Get off one's high horse, on the other hand, would figuratively mean to become humble or to be less haughty. An example would be, it's time he got off his high horse and realized how insulting his words are to his subordinates. 26th idiom is to be born with a silver spoon. In earlier times, it was a tradition for godparents to gift a silver spoon to their godchildren at their christening ceremonies, that is, if they could afford it. However, a child born in a rich family did not have to wait and could eat with a silver spoon right from the very start. So the idiom means to be born into a wealthy family. For instance, Rishi Resh was born with a silver spoon. 27th idiom is to play second fiddle to someone. Well, first you should know what fiddle means. It is another name for the stringed musical instrument more often called a violin. And the phrase comes from an orchestra in which the first violinist holds the most important position. So to play second fiddle to someone means to be in a supporting or subordinate role to someone. For example, Raj resented playing second fiddle to his younger brother in the management of the firm. Idiom number 28 is fair weather friends. Now, this expression likens fair weather to good times. A fair weather friend is thus a person 
who is dependable in good times but is not in times of trouble. An example sentence is, as a rich kid, he had only known fair weather friends who deserted him when he went broke. Idiom number 29 is a very common one, Midas touch. I'm sure everyone knows about the mythological story of King Midas who was granted his wish that everything he touches would turn into gold. Although the story drives home the point that one should not be too greedy, that it was a curse in disguise as in the end he touches and turns his only daughter into a gold statue, the meaning of the phrase here refers to King Midas' ability to turn everything into gold. So someone who has a Midas touch has the ability to make any venture profitable. An example would be, Ram has a Midas touch. Ever since he became the CEO of this company, it is rolling in money. And our last idiom in this section is, to tilt at windmills. The phrase was first used in the novel Don Quixote, where the protagonist, which means the main character, fights windmills that he imagines to be giants. The idiom thus means to fight battles with imaginary enemies or unimportant issues. Let's move on to section 4. The 10 idioms that we are going to cover in this section are there on your screen. Idiom number 31 is to wash one's dirty linen in public. Well, if you're washing your dirty linen in public, you're exposing your things or personal matters that should be kept private. Like probably two ladies discussing their husband's vices and other family affairs. Idiom number 32 is to look a gift horse in the mouth. This phrase alludes to determining the age of a horse by looking at its teeth. So it is used for someone who is being critical or suspicious of something received at no cost. For example, imagine that you received a car as a gift from your uncle and you were complaining about dents on his body. It's like looking a gift horse in the mouth. Next we have the idiom, rule the roost. The word roost means a perch on which domestic fowl or other birds rest or sleep. So someone who rules the roost is the one who is the dominating member in charge of all the decisions in a group. Like I can say, in our family, it is the grandpa who rules the roost. Idiom number 34 is to bring down the house, which means to evoke a lot of applause and cheers from the audience. The phrase is a hyperbolic term suggesting a noise loud enough to pose a threat to the building, though of course it is an unlikely occurrence. An example sentence is, the performance of the rock band brought the house down. Idiom number 35 is to blaze a trail. This phrase literally means to make and mark a trail. For instance, the scout blazed a trail through the forest. Figuratively, the idiom also means to do early or pioneering work that others will follow up on. And an example would be, Albert Einstein blazed a trail in the field of quantum physics. Next idiom is a fly in the ointment, which means a small defect that spoils something valuable or is a source of annoyance. For example, our vacations would have been very enjoyable, but the fact that we lost one of our bags during the tour was a fly in the ointment. Next, we have the idiom to take something with a grain of salt. The idiom is probably based on the idea that food tastes better and is easier to swallow if you add a little salt. 
So the phrase implies to consider something to be not completely true or right. Related phrase would be hard to swallow. For example, I have read her article which I take with a grain of salt. A piece of cake is again a commonly used idiom. Just as eating a piece of cake hardly requires any effort, the idiom is used to refer to an activity that requires little effort to finish or a job that is quite simple or easy. When you are an expert in your profession, the routine tasks are a piece of cake. Idiom number 39 is to be on cloud 9. This idiom is used to mean that someone is very happy. For example, ever since he got admission in an IIT, his parents have been on cloud 9. A related idiom is to be in 7th heaven. And the last idiom in this section is a cat's paw. It is a phrase derived from La Fontaine's fable, The Monkey and the Cat, which is a story of a monkey who once came upon some chestnuts roasting in a fire. Unwilling to retrieve the tasty chestnuts from the fire itself, the clever monkey managed to convince a somewhat dim cat to reach into the flames with his paw and fetch them. The monkey got his chestnuts and the cat was rewarded with a burnt foot. So, the phrase refers to a person used by another as a dupe or tool. Moving on to our next section, the contents are there on your screen. Idiom number 41 is a bee in the bonnet. Now, bonnet means a hat tied to your chin. This idiom clearly refers to the state of agitation one would be in when finding a bee inside one's bonnet. You would probably keep scratching your head, an action similar to when you are obsessed with an idea and you keep talking about it again and again. For instance, Kajal has a bee in her bonnet about dieting and weight loss. Idiom number 42 is a self-explanatory one. To put the cart before the horse, which means to reverse the logical order of doing things. For example, eating your dessert before dinner is like putting the cart before the horse. Idiom number 43 is to bury the hatchet, which means to settle differences and make peace. The phrase comes from the practice among Native American and Canadian tribes, literally to bury a war axe at the end of hostilities. Next idiom is flash in the pan. This idiom is used to refer to someone or something that draws a lot of attention for a very brief time. For example, in Bollywood, a lot of actors and actresses perform well in their debut movies but turn out to be a flash in the pan eventually. Next we have a very important idiom, beat around the bush. There is a story behind its origin. In earlier times, hunters were for a long time in the habit of beating around bushes to scare foxes out of hiding. It usually took a long time to rout a fox by this method and we therefore now use the term to indicate a roundabout way of coming to the point of a story or issue. An example sentence would be, when Shikha was asked why she returned home so late the previous night, she started beating around the bush. Curry favor. This term has got no connection with curry flavor that we use in cooking. Well, pun intended, curry favor is a distortion of curry favor and favor was the name of a horse. Now curry refers to curry combing the horse which would definitely please it. So the term means 
to attempt to gain favor or ingratiate oneself by officious courtesy or flattery. For example, it looks like Sandeep is trying to curry favor with his new boss. How else can you explain his going beyond the call of duty to supply groceries at his boss's home and inviting the boss's family over for dinner so often? Next idiom is a square peg in a round hole, which means to try to combine two things that do not belong or fit together. This idiom denotes an able man in the wrong job, a misfit. An example would be, he was a photographer by profession, so making him work as an editor at the printing press was like fitting a square peg in a round hole. Idiom number 48 is to give a wide berth to someone. The phrase comes from the nautical word. A berth is a place where a ship is tied up or anchored. When the anchor was lowered, a ship would tend to move about on the anchor cable, so it was important to give it a wide berth to avoid collisions. Today, to give someone wide berth is to steer clear of them. So, when you give a wide berth to someone or something, you basically avoid it and keep far away from it. For example, the dog we are approaching is known to bite people for no reason, so just give it a wide berth. Idiom number 49 is to upset the apple cart. This idiom means to overturn or disturb a plan or intention. For instance, this meeting was planned weeks in advance, so don't upset the apple cart now by giving lame excuses and saying that you can't attend. And our 50th idiom is to put a spoke in the wheel. This idiom means to interfere with or obstruct the progress of something. This phrase is a little confusing because spoke, as we understand, a wheel such as a bicycle wheel is full of spokes and one might wonder how putting another one could slow things down. However, the wheel referred to here is the ancient wheel, the solid wooden wheel, one which did not have any spokes. These wheels, however, contained a hole and whenever someone wanted to stop the wheel from moving, he inserted a spoke into the hole. The spoke or pin acted as a brake and thus impeded movement. An example sentence is, By telling the press everything about the illicit activities of the firm, he put a spoke in the wheel of his employer. So that completes this lesson. All the best for any exams that you might be preparing for. For a comprehensive coverage of this topic, do watch the other three lessons covering the rest of the 150 idioms. Hope you like this lesson. For any doubts or queries on this topic, please feel free to drop a comment on the video page. Alternatively, you may mail us your comments or feedback or any queries at aptispeak at the rate gmail.com. Subscribe our channel and stay tuned for more such videos. Thank you.